everyone, my name is Vina, aka Miss WOC Reader, and welcome and or welcome back to my channel. And on this lovely day, I am working on a few different things. So first off, I am trying to make content that I can put up on Instagram. And I'm also trying to see what I can put up on YouTube to, you know, keep the content flowing while I have all this free time. And I'm also trying to work on my fantasy story. Um, for those of you who are new here, I've been working on an urban fantasy project. It is a it is a young adult story that's set in a college setting and basically a girl goes away to college and discovers that she has magic powers and is a part of this group of practitioners and there's some threats to campus so she has to learn how to control her powers and so that's just like the vague description of it and I have been working on it for a little bit over a year now and it is some work like I've been I no longer am working full time so I have more time to dedicate to it but it's like giving myself that push to make sure I sit down and write every day has been a little bit of a challenge and then also like sometimes you sit down and write and you just like stare at the word doc all day so I'm really trying to make some more moves in that because the goal is to have the first draft completed by the end of spring which I feel like is already fast approaching even though spring hasn't even technically started yet so fun times but I I hit 50k like the other week which was great and right now I am just polishing the first half so that I can send it to my CP so that she can read it and give me all her thoughts so I'm sending her a little bit over 200 pages and that should be interesting just to get the feedback on how it reads and maybe things that I might need to tweak to make it read a little bit better. I do have a discord like a personal discord that I created that I've been using to keep track of this story as well. I just have different elements in it so I have um, different tabs for the characters like who the good guys are going to be who the bad guys are going to be different settings that in this within the story different magical elements different powers ran, just random scene ideas and so that's been a great place to just collect some of my thoughts because sometimes like I'll be like watching tv or like flip through the mag magazine or flip through instagram or something get an idea but I can't immediately build a chapter around it so I'll just put it in there to revisit later so that's been helpful because I've been going through and trying to incorporate some of those ideas in and it's really helped me strengthen um, some of my settings and descriptions too. And then like it's easy because sometimes I'll be like laying in bed at night and then I'll get an idea and then I'll quick grab my phone and I'll just throw it in the discord to revisit later. So right now one of the challenges has been is just making sure the magic feels very much realistic and on page because I feel like it can go either way. Sometimes I read stories that are supposed to be fantasy and I don't feel like I'm getting enough magic. So and then sometimes it feels like the magic system is too detailed in the story. It's like I really still do want this to be like character driven at the end of the day. So I'm not having like this crazy confusing world. I'm trying to make it very simple to understand, especially because my audience is going to be YA and I'm aiming it at actual teens, some who may just be getting into fantasy. So I want them to be able to pick up the book and enjoy it. So right now I'm working with elemental magic, but there's also spells. So I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate that. And that's where I get to the topic of today's video, which means that sometimes you can learn from a book that you don't necessarily love. So right here I have The Ravens, which I read a few years back, and I loved the premise of it. And I did like one of the characters in here, but then there was just little things that I didn't really enjoy about this one. So to start off, this is IP. It is Alloy Entertainment. If you don't know what IP is, IP is when a book packager or a publisher comes up with the concept and the characters and they hire writers to write it. 
and they have very like specific guidelines set for how they want the story to be written and they continue to go over and give approval for like how each section needs to go so I don't know how much like creativity that the authors were able to put into themselves in this story because IP tends to a lot of times be very straightforward and I've noticed that sometimes when I don't like a book and I don't like necessarily like the direction that it went in sometimes it is IP and there's just so many books out there that are IP that people wouldn't even realize so I saw the vision of what they were trying to do here um this one is IP by Alloy Entertainment Alloy Entertainment is a big book packager they do a lot of YA um you know them for shows like Gossip Girl or the 100 which is also ironically written by Cass Morgan who um, is one of the co-writers on this one so what they do is they come up with the concept and then they hire others to write it but Alloy also has their own um, production studio so they'll come up with the concept and they could be shopping a movie or a TV series at the same time so whenever I see a, de see a deal announcement for an Alloy book like 99% of the time I just assume like oh this might end up becoming a TV show like just because so much of their work has them become TV or movies so I like that's the goal for them to be able to make the profit from both the book and whatever media they're putting out for it and so I had first like found out about that um, years ago when I was reading when I was watching The Hundred and I um, read the book at the same time and they didn't really match up and they were like characters that were in the book that were not in the show but they came out at the exact same time so then I was confused because they read like nothing like the book read nothing like the show and then I found out that like, they, the books were being written as the show was being written after doing my research and then I found out more about Alloy and it just kind of made sense. So I picked this one up because I had liked the premise and I picked these up so long ago, um, did not spend a lot of money on them. Um, if you follow me on Instagram you know that I like to go shop at Ollie's. They tend to have books super cheap like less than five dollars and a lot of times they'll get like these um, Barnes and Noble book club picks which this was definitely one and just like any type of overstock. So I, I spent less than five dollars on most of the books. I think this one was like $1.99. So um, anyway I did like the parts with Scarlet, who was the black main character more than Vivi who was the white main character and that's, I think part of that too is just the author's voices so Cass Morgan wrote Vivi and then Daniel Page wrote Scarlet and I just found Vivi to be kind of like the typical like YA um Mary Sue type of character everything like came to her easily she was super special she gets the guy even though she doesn't deserve him and he was like Scarlett's boyfriend like two seconds earlier um I did like some of like the sorority politics and stuff that was going on here I liked some of the magical elements although I do feel like it was heavily inspired by the craft and um it does read much like a TV show which I tend to find like a lot of alloy books just read like a TV show. So I wanted to continue the series. Um, I have the Monarchs here and I've just been studying it because for one it's written in third person which not a lot of YA books are written in third person. People tend to just default to first person and think like first person is the go-to for YA. Like I've even had author friends talk about their publisher giving them pushback because their book is written in third person versus written in first person and I just believe like you have to be in the character's head for a YA and so that's like really interesting to me. I was initially was going to write in first person for um, the fantasy project and then it was actually some author friends who were like no do third person it'll just give you more room to play around with and 
I actually have been liking third person, but since it's not something I'm used to, like I have to constantly double check myself to make sure that I'm writing it correctly. So it's cool to see um, a fantasy approached from third person, so I'm making notes while reading this one. It does have the same problems that it had in book one for me, which like, on was just like, Viv not necessarily just Vivi being so annoying, but also the way they approach race. I perfectly understand what they were trying to do with this diverse environment, but it doesn't work for a university set in the southern USA. It just does not. And it's not like this is like years, years, years down in the future in like a sci-fi type of way. This is generally present day. And so there's this sorority coven of witches and everybody comes from all different races and backgrounds but they're like all legacies so like their moms and stuff were in the same sorority many of which who went to the same university I'm like eh, that doesn't fly if you know anything about southern universities you know that their Greek life is very segregated so like and like some of the sororities like and fraternities that they're approaching just like definitely are those like old white white sororities and fraternities set in their ways and stuff so like it just feels very weird that one doesn't really that part doesn't really click for me also just like the way it approaches race in general especially noticeable in Vivi's sections because she's the white character I don't feel like white people actually go around and like are hyper aware of other white people like yes they do see race but I feel like for them white is the default so they see race of everybody else more and it's kind of jarring for me when I read Vivi sections and we'll see just like random people going down the street like um to be like a white woman walk down the street and like this book constantly does that I don't feel like for those characters that are meaningless like we're not even getting any words from them that we need to state their race it could have just been like a woman wearing a red dress walk down the street or something instead it's like a white woman wearing a red dress walk down the street a black woman wearing a red dress walk down the street an Asian woman wearing a red dress walk down the street and that's like the only mentions you'll get of race and it's like it kind of acts like race is just skin color and that's it there's no like really cultural things in here not saying like everybody has to put their culture out in the forefront but like for such a diverse cast like just the way it approaches race is really weird so that's something like I also make a note of because my book has a diverse cast like it is a mainly black cast but there are also you know some white characters sprinkled in um Asian characters sprinkled in Latinx like so there's like a little bit of different people because they are in a PWI environment and I'm just trying to make sure that I do that part correctly and I don't want that like weird approach race because yeah they are from different backgrounds and that's a-okay like I when I went to a PWI some of my friends were of different backgrounds and we acknowledge that and there are just different cultural elements that just automatically come out so one of the things I've also been taking note of is the spells because I am having a hard time writing some of the, like the magical stuff in the book. Like I wasn't sure how to approach some of the spell casting so I've been trying to pick up books that do feature that spell casting just to see how the authors write those sections. I didn't love the magic system in this one. So it was kind of confusing because it was tarot magic but then it was also elemental magic and it didn't really feel like the tarot cards like did anything. So that part was very confusing to me. I have a pretty much straightforward elemental magic system in my story just to make it easier. Um, I have different powers that people have based on their elements but I'm not trying to make it too complicated. So like doing like some of the elemental stuff is fine but like I they also use spells and stuff so I wanted to make sure that I'm reading stuff where they use spells cause, so I can kind of see how the authors do that because a, a writing friend told me that spells are like very poetic and stuff and like they flow almost like music I'm not good at writing poetry so <laughs> mine definitely aren't gonna flow like music so I'm just trying to figure out my style in that regard 
but it has been interesting approaching this one just like as a teaching tool like the same way I would kind of approach a craft book and pick out different elements that I like and want to learn from and it really just says something that you can approach a book that you don't absolutely love and still get something out of it. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. Are like for those of you who are writers, um, is there like a particular book that you didn't love but you took some good things away from that helped you develop your own story? Let me know in the comment section below. If you made it this far in the video, leave me a heart emoji. And if you like this video, make sure and hit that like button. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!